I came across a video by the angry photographer, uh, Ken Wheeler, and he just opened a photo contest where he said, um, basically, it's like a stuck in the house photography challenge, um, just photographing around the house. And I thought, oh man, I actually have taken a lot of great photos around my house. Um, in fact, one of my favorites I took with my Nikon D3S, and it's this one here. And I thought, not even just that photo, but basically redoing that photo, because uh, that one was more candid, um, off the cuff, and I liked the way it turned out. So I thought, man, one of the cool things about this house is it has multiple levels, and as you can see, when you go up the stairs, you can see through the various levels. And I thought, yeah, I could have like my newborn baby Wyatt uh, at one area, and my wife in a separate area, like maybe a cross on the other side of the frame looking after him, my son down on a different level. I was just trying to think of ways to, to kind of embrace the idea of showing an entire house cutaway where this house is full of people and in different areas of the house all at the same time different people are doing different things as we're all stuck inside and then Ken said that one of the rules is you can't have kids in the photos I thought, oh crap now I gotta go back to square one right um, and then it occurred to me I like to drink almost everything out of mason jars um, I guess it's just a carryover from growing up um, I'm from Texas originally but I grew up in the Midwest in Indiana and my mom and my grandparents and my cousins, everybody, we use mason jars for everything. And uh, I drink my coffee in these. And whereas in America we have like ball mason, here we have Atlas mason. And as I was drinking my coffee, I had this black coffee in this clear mason jar and I'm drinking it facing the window and I saw all the light coming in and illuminating the back of these letters where it says, you know, Atlas uh, on either corner because I had the corner facing up. And then there was this black liquid at the bottom reflecting those letters. And I, in the light coming through the natural sunlight, I thought that's a really cool perspective as my, as my face is in, you know, looking into the cup. So I decided to make a second pot of coffee today because uh, I already drank my coffee this morning. And basically I'm gonna take this mason jar and this coffee and I've already opened the uh, the window over here because I want to put it against the window so that um, the bars that are on the other side of the window act as kind of an out of focus divider or or kind of interest in the background behind the jar coming through the light so it's not just plain white light and I realized we have a whole bunch of these kitchen skewer things you know for grilling meat on the barbecue these are disposable these are a dime a dozen so I grabbed a few of these basically bend them into this little M shape. That way I can set it up on the window just like that and the back of the mason jar will hit the glass uh, and sit here and the front of the mason jar will sit in a secondary little M shape and then my camera can go in front of that and look into the jar hopefully with that bar on the outside being a split divider. So far I already set it up and one of the problems I had was that the coffee was still hot. So I have now put it in the freezer to try and cool it off because I had all this steam coming out of it and I was trying to wait for it to cool naturally but it takes a very very long time for every bit of steam to come out of there naturally especially when it's sitting on its side like that so every single time I try to put my camera up to it as kind of a test fit or a test shot um, I was getting my my lens fogged up immediately so I'm gonna set it back up and we'll see if we can get a good photo out of it Got this little setup on this little improvised tripod. Um, I've now got my Samsung EX2F pulled out. This was the greatest camera you never heard about. One of the few I've kept for a long time and I love it. But I'm gonna see if this fantastic little camera can give me a good shot of this here. Now one of the things with this camera is that it actually has a very wide aperture which makes it pretty easy to get the wrong things in focus. That might work out. Now I try to get a little bit closer. That sh those two shots, I wanted to get the uh, the actual ring of the mason jar as kind of an entry point. And now, with this up inside of the cam of the mason jar, I'm hoping that it'll give it more of a little environmental, otherworldly kind of feel to it. All right. Now, I don't know how well you can see it on the camera. A few of my test shots here.
So, uh, I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna play with uh, zooming it in and out, different focal lengths, different aperture settings, um, macro on, macro off. Um, I will try different things and also, of course, play with it in editing and see what I can come up with. All right, today's a new day. Um, yesterday I got the photos taken into my computer. Uh, got them all loaded up. I had about 30 or so um, to choose from, which is already kind of exhausting to even think about because I typically don't like taking a lot of photos um, for various reasons. I'm, I'm very much the type of guy that I like to take a photo, just one photo of a scene, and then walk away from it. That's my photo, good or bad, whether it turns out or it doesn't, that's what I've got. And every once in a while, I find myself in a situation where I have to take multiple photos of the same thing um, for one reason or another. And when I bring it to the Lightroom, it just drains me. Um, it becomes mind numbing, you become kind of desensitized just clicking through so many photos, especially of nearly the exact same thing. You know, you see this slight difference here, a slight tweak there, and it's just all flying past you and it just, it all starts to mean nothing, it blends together. So I tried to avoid that. I tried to very quickly run through and if I didn't immediately like something when I saw it, I just deleted it. And when it was all said and done, I came down to seven photos I like. Okay, so this is the very first photo I took. Um, it's actually the very first photo I took and I'm surprised that it turned out so well. Um, nothing particularly I was really going for in this photo other than getting my line straight. Um, I'm, I'm kind of picky about, I like having my, my lines straight and even. Um, it kind of drives me crazy when I can tell something is not level or when I see um, vertical lines in a photo are kind of falling away or coming at you because the, the camera was tilted, especially in a photo where it's really not meant to look that way. Uh, people are too focused on the subject. I always notice the line to the photo and to see if the photo is, is squared up with the camera or not. And with the next photo, my whole goal was to actually, the reason why I just lifted the camera and kind of pointed at the top of the jar was I just wanted to get those those top letters, the atlas, actually in the frame without being cut off. And that this is actually one of the great things about this camera actually, is that it has a built-in macro function, a dedicated macro mode. Even uh, just focusing on these letters that are in the foreground, you can see that the letters in the foreground are sharp and in focus. And the bottom of the jar, uh, it looks like little bokeh balls where the light is hitting um, these contact points. So even uh, even just a difference of something being six, you know, five or six inches away from the camera turns it into bokeh balls, even on a small little point and shoot. So this is one of the cool things about using a macro lens or a camera with a macro function is that um, you don't just have to shoot macro. You can also use it just to take advantage of the fact that even on a smaller center camera, you end up having a very, very, very thin depth of field and it's really easy to achieve bokeh. Now we come over to this photo and this one was shot with my Panasonic. The next five photos were actually all shot with my Panasonic. And I was using my eight to 18 uh, Leica lens. And this one was shot at eight millimeters, which is about 16 equivalent on a full frame. And the whole point of this was that I didn't just want to get the same interior of the jar. I actually wanted to show the opening, the mouth of the mason jar as kind of an entry point, uh, kind of like a, a surreal tunnel effect, right? And the idea is that it's, it's a, it's a frame, a very definite frame without immediately exposing itself as what it is or being too distracting. This one's cut in a little bit closer. This one was taken at 10 millimeters, which is a 20 millimeter equivalent in full frame. I was going for the exact same effect. I just wanted to see if maybe having less of the opening um, and more of the interior would be a little bit better. But I actually think I like the first one better. Uh, this one was taken at 14 millimeters, so a 28 millimeter equivalent. And I'd actually taken one at 12, but I didn't like the way it turned out, so I tossed it. And this one is a 28 millimeter equivalent. And you can still see the opening of the jar in the corners, um, but the interior of the jar is, is starting to take kind of center stage here. 
this one was taken at 18 millimeters, which is more or less a 35 millimeter equivalent on full frame. And I like the way this turned out a lot. Again, I was trying to actually replicate what I did with the Samsung on this one um, in that I made sure that from the left and the right, there was about the same amount of space between the S on the left and the edge of the frame and the A on the right and the edge of the frame. And if you look at the top, the S and the A, um, neither of them touch the frame. And if you look at the bottom, the N and the M don't actually touch the frame. So everything is within the frame and nothing is cut off as far as the letters go. Then my last photo, um, it just occurred to me before I packed everything up was that um, with the with the lettering, the three rows of letters either pointing up like a pyramid or pointing down like a valley, it's a very vertical look. And especially with that rod going through the middle of the mason jar, um, showing the reflection and the, the transparency through the glass, this vertical line that goes straight up and down, I thought, it might match the frame of the photo better if I take a vertical photo. So a vertical photo with that vertical line going through the middle and those um, semi-vertical lettering, it might match very, very well. And I think it turned out pretty well. I actually like the way it looks overall. I like the framing. However, at this point, I really don't know which of these photos would be the best one to choose. So I might, uh, I might have to walk away from it for another few hours and do some more thinking. Um, I might even have to go back and, and re-edit some of these a little bit to, to see what I can make happen. Maybe I can bring some better color out of some of these files. Okay, so I went through and I re-edited all seven of those photos. Um, just kind of changed the exposure a bit. Um, kind of accentuated the yellow or the orangish color of the coffee where it was meeting the glass in a few of the photos where I thought it kind of faded out a little bit. Um, so instead of having seven photos, I ended up with 14. Uh, then I took all 14 of those photos and I transferred them over to a Google Drive uh, folder, compared them side by side mind-numbingly for a while, and got it narrowed back down to eight. Uh, basically one of each with uh, one of the original seven actually being in there twice. Because although it's a subtle difference, I honestly cannot decide which of those subtle differences I like better. This is the uh, the vertical photo. Um, anyway, so now I have a, a folder in Google Drive that I'm going to share a link to down below, uh, or it might be here in the corner of the screen. And if you can go over to that folder, take a look. I've renamed all, f all of the photos to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So a letter for each of the eight photos. I know it's a lot. But if you could just kind of go through and kind of vote, just either in the comments down below or maybe in the community tab on my channel, if you could tell me which photo you think looks the best. Um, again, this photo, or the purpose of this photo is for the upcoming photo contest being held by the angry photographer. And the grand prize is a Fujifilm X-T30. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time. Please, I, I don't ask people to do things for me typically. I don't ask people to subscribe. I don't ask you to comment. However, I would really appreciate it if you could give me your input on which of those photos you like the best. It would greatly help me because I'm terrible at choosing these types of things. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Please vote and I don't know, I'll see you next time. Thanks.